Hi, everyone. It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today, this video is going to be about my take on the August 2023 astrology. So we've got two full moons this month, which is unusual, and one new moon. And we also have the sun going into Leo, which of course is where we've got our ongoing Venus retrograde. I want to say uh, a big shout out to my brother John. It was his birthday a short while ago. I missed giving this uh, greetings to him in my July video. So happy birthday. All right, so we start off on the 1st of August here with a full moon in Aquarius. It'll be at 11.31 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and it will be at 9 Aquarius uh, 15 minutes. And of course, because it's a full moon, the sun will be in the opposite sign, which is Leo. So that the sun will be at 9 Leo 15 minutes. So when we look at Aquarius, um, it tends to be a, a, a neutral sign from the standpoint that it's not a big emotional thing. Um, it does, though, like its independence and uh, is willing to fight for freedom. It's all about uh, humanitarian causes, for instance, um, scientific things as well. Um, and, and really just being, in many ways, um, independent and free from the fetters of emotional things, <laughs> just generally speaking. Um, so at this full moon, something's going to come to light. Something is going to end. Uh, a culmination of some sort may happen. So what we have is um, Mercury and the Mars is going to be at this time in Virgo. So this says to me, uh, fighting words, um, or at the very least, um, energy, that's Mars, being put into thoughts, into writing, or into communicating. So it looks like this type of setup would be a good time to analyze data and information. Now, Mercury itself will be exactly opposite Saturn. So this says to me some kind of um, opposition, literally, or challenges from those folks that, you know, um, are the keeper of the rules and the regulations. We've got Mars trying uh, Jupiter exactly, and so this is fortunate action. And then Pluto, of course, uh, is, is the final degrees of uh, Capricorn. It will be squaring those newly minted north nodes uh, in Aries at 29 degrees. So I think this is really, it, to me, I got this feeling of this ushering in of this energy right at the beginning of August. And I think this whole month of August, by the way, is going to be, I think, very emotional. And it doesn't mean it's going to be emotional, bad emotional, but with the two full moons and the fact that we've got um, a new moon in Leo and lots of Leo stuff happening, um, we speak of drama to some extent as well. Um, and not all drama has to be bad either. So that's what I get. The beginning of August is like this whoosh of air. Now, if we think of it, Aquarius is um, an air sign too, right? And it's electrified air. That's what I'm getting here. Certainly with Pluto squaring the north nodes, it says to me that um, some folks in power don't want to let others, like the collective, be independent and have their own say, especially when we've got the tie in here of Mercury very much, and then Mars giving it energy. It says to me, I think that there are going to be a lot of people speaking out about humanitarian causes. And um, if we're lucky, that whole Mars trine Jupiter, especially with Jupiter represents foreign nations, we will have some fortunate action happen for those that are in some kind of humanitarian crisis. So this is going to be followed up by the 10th of August, where our Venus retrograde in Leo will be squaring Uranus at 22 degrees of Leo and Taurus. So this is kind of a little bit of a, um, maybe a, it could be breakups for some folks. It could have some unexpected information come in. 
Uh, regarding what? It, regarding relationships, a love, but it can also have something to do with money too. So there may be some kind of unexpected shakeup with regards to some of our money systems that are out there right now. I got a feeling more with that um, because Taurus is involved with the Uranus and then Leo, of course, is with um, the Venus part of it. But this could just be some kind of information comes to light with regards to love, money, and of course our values too, right? And, and at a more superficial level, um, it, it, it's this challenge to what we think is beautiful. On the 13th of August, we have that sun. And don't forget, the sun is the ruler of Leo. So the sun is important to watch when we're talking about this whole Venus retrograde in Leo too. So that sun's going to be conjunct Venus retrograde. And I would say that's a significant day. So if you have anything in Leo, I would say, now this is going to be around, around the 20, 20, 21 degree mark of Leo. Um, this is going to occur. So if you have something around that, so let's say 19 to 23 degrees of Leo, um, you may have some unexpected things happen to you here. And again, I go back to that, well, what does Venus represent? Um, but this is a little more personal when we have the sun, the ruler of Leo, conjuncting that Venus retrograde in Leo. Um, but money, our values, maybe your values are going to be shaken up. Maybe um, you're going to realize that you're not valuing yourself enough. Maybe you're not valuing yourself in some emotional relationships of some sort. But it can be your money too. And it can be all these things. Love, money, and values. They could all be up here for some kind of... Um, big illumination, right? And, you know, for others, this could turn out to be a very favorable day to meet someone and fall in love. The sun, ruler of Leo, in Leo, conjunct Venus retrograde. I know it's a retrograde, and we tend to think of retrogrades not a good time to start something. Well, maybe it isn't a good time to have something solidify, but maybe you're going to have the spark there, and you have to go through a process during the summer of 2023, maybe right the way through September, October, uh, where, where we'll still have uh, Venus and Leo, before things actually start to take some kind of shape, and maybe uh, you can see a future with this relationship. On the 16th of August, we have our new moon in Leo. So, Happy New Year to all you Leos. It'll be at 2.38 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and it will be at 23 degrees of Leo, 17 minutes. Now what's interesting at this moon is that this conjuncts Madonna's own sun. So I think that this is going to mark for Madonna a, um, a new start. Maybe this will be the day or around these days she'll make the announcements of when her tour is actually going to, for sure, uh, go on. Or maybe she's just going to take a whole new look at her life. But I'm telling you that this sets her up for a whole year of new starts. So good luck to her. Leo, uh, as a sign, of course, is um, is very much a, a sign about heart love, right? It's it it rules the heart. Um, the sun rules Leo. The sun is the center of our uh, solar system, so it, it is the most important luminary out there. So this could be a really good time for some folks. I'm thinking, especially Leos, just generally speaking even if it's not conjunct this uh, new moon, um, that because we have so much in Leo, there could be a very nice activation for a lot of Leos this year. Uh, maybe that have been suffering from the squares that we've had ongoing too. Um, but new starts, I got this feeling of really new starts here. And of course, um, this could be new starts in for those folks who want to set up their own business. It could be new start, say that somebody wants to get pregnant because this, the whole Leo vibe rules these areas, right? So children, um, your own business, um, any kind of creative endeavors could be fantastic at this time. A good uh, date to note here, right? So again, that's the 16th of August. Now, we will have the sun and the moon square Uranus. 
And so I think even though there's a lot of positiveness around this new moon in Leo, there could be uh, sudden meltdowns in communications. Don't forget Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. So we're talking about communications and more electrified communications. Now, all over the planet, we're having um, all these heat waves and abnormal temperatures along with other types of weather conditions. So this might be some meltdown of some of the um, electrical grids that have been just are being overused right now. Um, we have Mercury will be conjuncting Mars at this time. And so I saw this as a great time, this uh, new moon, to have some real focused work. I mean, Virgo is all about paying attention to the details, but not just, just details to do it. It likes to sort out what are important details. So if you've got some very particular work where you've got to pick out the right details, get the right data and the right information, this new moon could be great for that. We also have Venus retrograde trining Chiron. And I thought this is really nice too. To me, this says, um, say there are some folks that have a love come back into their lives, but you really don't want to pursue anything. It, this whole setup of the trine can give kind of like a healing balm, um, B-A-L-M, to maybe some past hurts. Um, that type of thing can come in very, the trines are very favorable, very easy. So that's what I saw here was that type of thing. Or just making things better where something, where there was a hurt before, especially as it applies to anything to do with um, love. Okay, on the 17th of August, we have that sun, which rules Leo, is also going to be squaring Uranus. And that's going to be at 23 degrees of Leo Taurus. And so this is definitely some kind of shakeup. Now, the shakeup could come to things like royalty. There could be some kind of big shakeups, maybe in more than one different area. It rules drama and that type of thing. So we could talk about our, ro our royalty of the Hollywood royalty um, could have some major shakeups of some sort here. I mean, there's an ongoing um, writer's strike as well as other things going on in Hollywood. So this may just be another point where things boil up to the surface. And um, so this might be some real protests going on. Um, on the 20th of August, that sun in Leo will be nicely, though, trying the north nodes in Aries. So the 20th of August follows on that heels of the um, square with Uranus. And so this is going to bring a solution for the destiny path. So again, going back to any kind of disruption that might happen around the 17th or unexpected surprises that aren't necessarily pleasant, we could, a few days later, have some favorable energy in here that helps you set on a path for your destiny that lets you be independent, um, but supports you at the same time. And I see this actually playing out in, um, in the whole Hollywood thing that's going on right now. All right, so on the 23rd of August, we have another retrograde. It's going to be Mercury going retrograde, and it will go retrograde at 21 degrees of Virgo till the 15th of September, where it'll go direct at 8 uh, Virgo. So heads up for those Virgos, uh, you know, Mercury does rule your sign. It also rules Gemini too, but in particular, the Virgos, there could be some there's a combination of things when it affects you directly, Virgo. It could mean that you have to go back and look at data or information that has to be revised. You could have somebody come back to you from the past. Maybe a project was rejected and now it's coming back in again to be revised and uh, brought back up again for some new uh, reason of some sort or you just decide you want to go back on something and um, revise some of the data that you have or information that you collected in the past over that time period, from the 23rd of August to the 15th of September. Um, but it isn't probably a good time to sign contracts if you can avoid it. But if it's something you had already set in motion prior to the retrograde, usually those things turn out fine. 
Um, I didn't mention the day before this, on the 22nd of August, we have Venus retrograde squaring at Jupiter um, at 15 Leo and Taurus. And this is the second time this happens. Now, I don't really see this square as being um, bad or unfavorable. I think what this is going to bring in is some maybe some tension with regards to um, some kind of Venus-related thing that might be going on in your life, and that may be a, a love relationship. Um, it can have something to do with money as well. And in that case, if it is, it could be that maybe you overstepped your mark a little bit in terms of the risks that you took with regards to your money, and you have to dial back a bit. Um, but I feel that this is favorable energy for um, a love relationship of any sort. And maybe this is just for some folks is going to see the progression of a love relationship, but that all of a sudden you say, well, wait a minute, I think I'm going too fast here. It's, 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 it's becoming so big so fast, I'm not sure. And so it might be that type of energy where it's, you know, sometimes everything's just so good, you can't believe it's so good. Uh, doesn't mean that it isn't good, by the way. It just means those feelings may come in at this time. Remember, at the beginning of this video, I said this is going to be a very emotional month um, where a lot of ahas will be happening and um, just a lot of feelings are going to be on the surface, right? Okay, so when we look at the 30th of August, we've got that final full moon and it is in Pisces at um, 6.36 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and it is at 7 Pisces, 25 minutes. Now, just prior to that moon becoming a full moon, uh, it will be conjunct Saturn. As you recall, Saturn is in Pisces too. And so I think maybe on the 29th, um, if you've got this sort of indicated in any way in your chart, like say your sun is at this, or your ascendant, or maybe your midheaven, um, there may be some authority figure, some rule, some regulation that comes in to say, no, we're going to have to just stop that right now. We're going to have to put a delay on that. And then the next day, maybe you realize that, again, like at an aha moment where you say, okay, I know I can't go forward with this right now, but what can I do? And so those sort of machinations may end up going on as well. Because we are going to have Mercury retrograde, but it'll be trining Jupiter. And so this may bring in some, what? Useful thoughts, useful information that may be applicable in the future when, you know, this whole Mercury retrograde grows direct. So I think it supports anything negative that happens with the Moon conjunct Saturn. Uh, we will have a wide square uh, between Venus and Jupiter. Um, again, I don't see this as a negative thing. I spoke about that also in the 22nd of August time period. Um, now, what is interesting though with the Venus retrograde is that it will be at the 12 degree mark of Leo. And recall that is the degree that Venus will be going direct on the 3rd, 4th of September, 2023. So I just saw that as another kind of maybe, I'm thinking pieces of information may be coming in or you attract something in that's important for you to know. The Venus is still retrograde, but because it's actually at that point, Venus is now beginning to think of, oh, I can now move forward with what? With this relationship, um, with not doing this relationship, with... Um, some kind of money situation that you might be in, or move forward with a new value system, or move forward with a new you, you know, where you say, okay, I've taken a few months to figure out how do I want to change my image? Um, how do I think I want to look to be beautiful, to feel beautiful? And so you may be getting that type of thing happening where you can say, okay, in, in a few days time, I can pull the trigger on this and show, uh, and do what I want to do, right? Now, at this full moon, we have um, a yod formed as well, but this time the yod is formed with Uranus and Neptune as anchors uh, pointing at the south node up there in Libra. And so I saw this as um, an enlightenment and an inspiration 
for some folks to let go of a relationship because we've got Le- it's pointing at Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. It's all about relationships. But it could also be pointing at changing up and doing something different. Uranus says, let's change this. And Neptune, of course, is the higher octave of Venus. So that's how I saw this yod. I saw this as a very positive yod. That for those folks that maybe want to change up, uh, either the way they do love, the way they've been receiving love, giving love, this could give you a real opportunity to put some of that literally in the past and to move forward. All right, so let's take a little peek at September 2023. So Venus is going to be going direct at 12 degrees on the 3rd, 4th September. And at the same time, Jupiter will go retrograde. Uh, We will have Mercury go direct. We have a new moon in Virgo and a full moon in Aries. All right, next I'm going to do um, individual signs, just a few minutes. of uh, your ascendant and or your sun sign, whichever one resonates with you, you should listen to. And maybe it might be good to listen to both your sun sign as well as your ascendant. So Virgo, this full moon in Aquarius falls in your sixth house of health. So just generally speaking, this could be some kind of uh, revelation with regards to your health. You may decide to stop doing certain things. Maybe you're eating the wrong foods. Um, maybe you're not exercising correctly, or maybe the exercising that you're doing aren't benefiting from you. And it comes to light that, well, what am I doing this for? I need to change this and do a different thing. That could come to light. For others, it may be the day-to-day job that you do. And if you do not work, it can just be the day-to-day things that you do. Um, you decide to maybe change up a bit. Or it may change for you, because of course, um, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, and Uranus you know, likes to shake things up sometimes. And so there may be just a shake up with regards to your day-to-day job and or the things that you do, or you yourself may just decide to change some things in these areas. Now, the new moon in Leo will be in your 12th house. And so this could, um, you know, because Venus retrograde is here as well, this could be that, uh, this could be secret love affairs. Um, But it could also be a a time when you can't move forward with, say, a love in your life, that you have to keep things on the down low for whatever reason. And there's all sorts of reasons this could be. Um, What else could it be? It could be a time when you look carefully at the underpinnings. Um, Maybe the, the real psychological effects of the love that you have in your life. But you know, it could equally be a time when you look at your your money that you've got in your life. And I think though more importantly, some Virgos are going to be looking closely at their values, right? And ask yourself, maybe with the, the loves that you've got in your life, are these people valuing me? Now, remember, you've got a Mercury retrograde also going on in the month of August. And so there may be some scrambled signals here for you. So I would say hold off Virgo making any big decisions on maybe ending relationships, unless it's a real obvious thing that you need to do that. Um, I never would want to stop you if it's something you really need to do. But because there's this big possibility of, with the Mercury retrograde, scrambled signals not getting messages. So that's the other thing that could work in tandem with the new moon in Leo in the 12th house, is that you miss some messages for some reason, or someone um, doesn't give you a message that they're supposed to, and you don't get the information that you need. But it's something to do with information or messages could be either wrong, misguided, um, and you, this could be your thoughts as well, by the way. Mercury can represent that too. So I would certainly allow for September to end before making major decisions with regards to a potential love in your life, uh, if you can. Um, The 12th house also rules, you know, taking a rest. So there may be some Virgos that say, I'm taking a rest from love in my life. I need to take care of me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I need to put some value on myself. And that means I need to take a big rest here. 
Now, the full moon in Pisces will be opposite your sign, Virgo. And don't forget, we still have uh, both Neptune and Saturn uh, opposite you as well. So this puts a focus on your seventh house, and the seventh house is partnerships. And this is business partnerships as well as love partnerships. I would say there's going to be probably some Virgos that will probably decide to make some changes with regards to their partnerships. More than likely, it will be the love partnership that you have, like your marriage or a serious partnership. Um, or And or you could change up clients. That's the other thing I'm thinking as well, is that you just decide to go for a different um, client base at this time that makes more sense to you. Maybe something that's a little more spiritual, maybe something that has a more healing element, maybe something shamanic, for instance. Um, now, the other thing that it can bring up, though, is your partner coming into focus. Um, your partner may have something to say to you at this full moon that may bring an ending to something, uh, but it doesn't have to be an ending of the relationship. It could be an ending with regards to the stage the relationship is in. I mean, Pisces is a very spiritual sign. Um, it's the higher octave, of course, of Venus. So it operates at a pretty high level at the best of times. The only other thing this could bring in from a negative standpoint, Virgo, is that um, a secret is brought up with regards to your partnerships, whether it is a business partnership or marriage partnership at this time. But like I said, you've got that ongoing Mercury retrograde kind of operating behind the scenes, making you feel maybe confused um, and, and like I said, mixed messages as well as missed messages. So again, make sure you check all your spam email, especially you, Virgo, um, and look where you might nor normally look and double check things if you're not sure, especially if you're not hearing from someone that you expected to hear from. Take care, Virgo, of yourself. Well, that wraps up my look at August astrology. As always, I say you have, you are in the driving seat. I'm just giving you some information that I hope will support you and help you to make decisions that really work for you in your life. Keep cool out there, guys. It seems everywhere is boiling hot or um, flooding or fires. <laughs> um, yeah. Take care of yourself. I'm sending everyone lots of love, especially with that Venus, even though it's retrograde in Leo, sending lots of heart energy to everyone. Take care and bye for now.